Hi, my name is John Cordy, and here are my tips on how to use a gate. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to dig into the dual rectifier, Cali rectifier, as it's called in the HX stump. So I feel like this model is a little bit maybe underappreciated or misunderstood or maybe just some people don't like it so what I wanted to do was go through some settings from some other people and also look at the manual from Mezabugi see what they say about this amp then hopefully we can get somewhere closer to what we're wanting to achieve with the Cali rectifier model. Uh, another thing to bear in mind is that if you're wanting a different kind of rectifier model the fatality in the Helix World is a slightly tweaked version of the Cali Rectifier. So both of those are Rectifier models. Another thing to say is that this model is based on the red modern solid state rectifier. So the red channel in the modern setting with the solid state rectifier settings. So not tube rectification. So that's worth bearing in mind if you look in the manual and look for settings for that and stuff. So I think that's also worth bearing in mind as it, some people use like the orange channels and raw settings and all that stuff. So we're dealing with just the red channel in modern with solid state rectification. So. So what I wanted to also point out is that so a lot of people with Mesa Boogies point out that you know you have to run the bass low and all this sort of stuff. With a rectifier, however, this is slightly not the case. As I understand it, a Mark series amp, quite a lot of Mesa Boogies other designs, have the tone stack before the gain. And what then happens is if you boost the, the bass, it's a, it's a very pronounced kind of difference. And the mids and trebles as well especially, so like turning up the treble on a Mark series amp increases the gain, etc. It's called cascading gain or whatever, isn't it? In the rectifier world, this is not actually the case. The tone stack is post the gain section. And basically it makes that tone section a little bit less kind of influential. And in the Mesa Boogie manual it says that the most influential control or on the amp is the gain control. So that's worth bearing in mind, I think. So this particular... Uh, is This particular tone is based on Mark Tremonti's settings, which are fairly on the aggressive side. So he has this drive apparently on 6. He runs his bass at 10. So that's uh, pretty crazy. So these are just numbers, not like 6 o'clock or whatever. He's drive at 6, bass at 10 mids at four, treble at six, presence at three and a half, channel volume, I've got it at stock settings, 5.7, the master I've chucked up to 6.6, .6, and then everything else as standard. So, Kind of quite a big flappy low end. I think Mark Tremonti specifically on his rig rundown talks about wanting kind of really big bass, um, you know, and that's one of the reasons that he also runs a Bogner Uberschall alongside his dual rectifier apparently. So what else is on in this signal chain? We've got a, a Minotaur or, you know, the Clon. Uh, we've got the gain there at six, tone at four, level at six, so turn that off. That's kind of bringing out some more of the mids. Um, so that's something you might not have thought of trying. I certainly hadn't. But that's what Tremonti does and those are the settings that he uses. So the clon instead of something more traditional like a tube screamer I guess. And then cab wise I'm just using a, a 4x12 V30. I'm using a dual cab and on one I've got a 57 on the other I've got a Royer 121 I think. That kind of first tone is just to demonstrate that you can put those settings in fairly aggressive places and it doesn't necessarily get crazy over the top. It doesn't necessarily get overwhelmingly bassy. Oh dear. 
But I wanted to jump into this um, manual and just go for some instant gratification settings. So this is from the manual itself and this is apparently instant gratification. So if I turn off the boost at the start. So even with the drive down at two, you do have quite a chunk of gain. So don't be afraid to, to move that gain down lower. In terms of sweet spots, I'll just flash up the manual here, but here's what they say about the gain. They say that the most balanced kind of tone will be in between like the 11 and two o'clock range. Um, the brightest is like down this two section so I guess that's why in this instant gratification when you've got your drive down lower at two they're kind of suggesting to run the presence and treble low and the warmer and saturated stuff kind of happens uh, you know past about two o'clock half past two you know so settings around sort of seven and eight um, is where <laughs> There, that's got kind of like a massive fuzzy tone. Boost that with the clon. Yeah, so a lot of usable tones, I think, um, but it's just going to take time to, to get to know how this stuff. Kind of works and so in the manual it, it says here the high region of the gain knob so between so between about seven and ten on the dial saturates the signal and enhances the low and low mid frequencies while this region provides the maximum saturation and therefore sustain it also compresses and softens the attack characteristics for this reason we suggest using this higher region of the gain control sparingly and only when maximum sustain is needed so maybe for lead stuff and I guess what they're therefore suggesting is that using that setting between 11 and 2 before it's kind of the optimal area for the gain control. And there's some other suggestions on sweet spots for treble. So they're saying here between about 11 and 130. At higher gain settings, the mid control dials in punch and aggression. For the tightest crunch cording, set the mid control high, say around 12 to 130. To make single notes feel juicier and more liquid, reduce the mid-control to around 7.30 or so in the modern red mode using the mid-higher, so that's the mode that we're in, and in conjunction with the presence control, also set higher, delivers a downright ugly crunch that's huge and angry, not for the meek. This setting also sounds great and becomes easy to play and more elastic feeling with the gain controller set at one or higher. So we're going to try that using the mids higher and the presence control also set high. <laughs> Turn the drive down a bit, so we've got seven now. And with the boost at the front. So the bass, this control blends in lower frequencies and its effectiveness again depends on the setting of the treble control. Extreme settings in either high or low directions can produce an unbalanced tone. Too much bass will cause a flabby unfocused sound. In the modern red channel try setting the bass control somewhere between 11 and 2 o'clock. These settings will vary with the amount of gain and treble you use. The present sweet spot is, is really kind of short uh, and small. If you look at this section here, um, but yeah, I just thought that. that was kind of... I thought that was a really interesting kind of way to to 
to find out about some of this stuff so just to take a look at that manual and see what Mezaboogie actually say about the thing. So as I've turned that drive down to three that's suddenly got really tight so we've got mid to eight there and the presence still at eight, the treble at two, the driver's down at three with that clone in front. And you can boost that bass up to nine and see what that does. Tones. but I just wanted to, to put this across to you um, that there's quite a lot of different tones available from the rectifier and try experimenting with this drive kind of in different places kind of usable the whole range and has quite a, a drastic impact on tone so that's the drive there at 0.4 you know whereas if we chuck it up to chuck it up to 7.6 as it is there it's a, a very different tone a totally different sounding and feeling thing. Don't forget that's with the presence run really high. So I'm just going to try and find some more examples of how other people use the rectifier. But the Tremonti one was uh, an interesting one for me because he was doing a couple of things that I thought was kind of unorthodox running that bass really high, so those were his settings. And running that clon in front, which I think is definitely something worth looking at. <laughs> 